Greetings and thank you for joining us today. Here at R. Kelly Appeal TV, we're going to be discussing topics of what is going on with the case that could impact the appeal. Thank you for being here. Thank all my commenters for being honest about the content. Okay, so I ran into a really nice song. It's a new song. Well, not new to me. It was about maybe six years ago. <laughs> Um, but I want, I think, I think this is very fitting to the conversation that we're going to talk about today. So let's take a brief listen. This is a true story. This is a true story. This is a true story. A couple of days ago, I got a phone call saying, Are you Mr. Kelly? And I say, Who is this? Then he said, It's Tamika's lawyer. And I'm calling on her behalf. And then he said, I've got some news that I think you would want to know. And then he said, She's pregnant. <sighs> So I want to stop there. If you're very interested in listening to the rest of that song, it's called It It Might Be Mine by R. Kelly. Um, I think that is fitting for today because we are talking about Miss Andrea Lee, Miss Andrea Lee. Um, and she did an interview three days ago about using the last name Kelly. So we're going to let you take a listen to this commentary. And I do have some points, very, very uh, uh, active points in the video. And I also want to get your comments. Thank you so much for being here, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. And if you are interested in becoming a winner of the three Cash App uploads that are going to take place for the commenters on the channel, May 29th. Please look in the description box below in order for you to get the details. So let's get into this. So Andrea Lee is back at it again. You know, the woman who claims that she could do more with the last name Kelly and made a career at having R. Kelly's last name. Sometimes she's bipolar with it. Sometimes she's egoic with it. Let's listen to this interview that came out about three days ago to get your opinion. Here we go. What has been your reaction to this? I have none because that was his trial, not mine. Why y'all the boys your time? That was his trial and not yours. Yeah. Do you regret marrying him? Not at all. I have three beautiful children to regret marry, And that's what people don't understand. I sit in a special place. I'm a survivor and I'm also his ex-wife and the mother of his children. So to regret ever meeting him means I regret my children. I never, I have the best part of him, his three kids. Wow. And I think people in the public, I really don't understand that. Because I know that you, you get held uh, or you go under a lot of scrutiny be because, and you still have his last to have his last name. Okay, well, let's make a correction about that. She about to get real cute with the public. Come on. I don't have his last name. It's not like he left me a house, and even if he didn't, I decided to live in it to the day I die. That is my business. My last name is not a car lease. You don't turn it in at the end of the marriage. My name is Andrea Danielle Kelly, and I earned that name, blood, sweat, and tears. And people should not be worried about why I kept the last name. They should be more concerned about what I do with the last name. Because if my name wasn't Kelly, I wouldn't be on CNN. 2020 wouldn't come and follow me for a day. I wouldn't go to the island of Anguilla and speak about domestic violence and surviving and going through that transition. Because if my name was Jones, let's be real clear, my phone wouldn't ring. It's women going through what I went through right now as we speak. And no one cares because they're not famous. So people try to crucify me for the very thing they're curious about. Mm. So don't worry about the last name. Worry about what I'm doing with it. All right, give her a round of applause for that. Now, I have felt that. So we saw you on Growing Up Hip Hop. Um, do you have any other plans on being on any other platforms telling your story? 
I do. Actually, everybody else puts me in a box. I've been in seven plays, five movies. Currently, we just wrapped on 10. Man Robinson Studios, written, produced, directed by, starring Vivica Fox, Clifton Powell, uh, Malik Whitfield, uh, Jess Hilaire. Like, I, we have a star-studded cast. Just finished wrapping that. About to do Angry Insecure Men again. So I've been doing plays. Actually wrote, produced, and starred in my own sitcom, Penthouse Suites, where I play five different characters. Wait a minute. Come on for Tyler Perry. Yeah. For Tyler Perry or for taking on what R. Kelly left behind, which was the Trapped in the Closet series. It sounds like she is now making her way, which I would never watch any of them because to look at her and to see her style of thought, her mentality, it would be so corny to watch those videos. Or those those sitcoms or those plays. Not to judge her in any way, just because I don't like her. Um, I don't like her personality because she's very crucial. She's very vindictive. She's very I'm gonna she's a crab that was in a bucket that made her way supposedly to a top that as we continue to watch her story, she's gonna fall. She is going to fall and her using the excuse of being a domestic violence survivor and helping other people. No, you would not be the way you are right now if you were truly helping other people. Your arrogance, your integrity is very, very dysfunctional. Um, She has no type of professionalism. She tries to be professional. It's like a hood chick trying to be professional. And she's judging how other people view her. And it's like she's in a high school um, and girls are gossiping about her and she's swinging the head. She's saying what, you know, all this other negative stuff and it's making her look horrible. What are your thoughts on that? I think Andrea Lee, um, she never uses her last name, but she'll use Jones because Jones is just as popular. But here's the catch. She got married to another superstar, another singer, and she only kept the last name Kelly. So her sitting in the back of his tour bus, however she got there, is just like all the other women. They were set up. They had a futuristic um, manifestation that they wanted and expected in their lives. And she is the throwaway wife. She's the one that all the other women um, that he chose other women over. So, of course, she's going to be bitter. She's going to be frustrated. She's going to have to be more egoic than any other because she does sit in a special place, but that special place is a very sad place because you were divorced from this man that vowed to be with you for the rest of your life. And so that kind of makes it a throwback situation. Um, Not to disrespect her in any way, but this is how I'm feeling about it because she has no true understanding of what it's like to be in a position of integrity with the man who has been accused of what Robert Sylvester Kelly has been accused of. She's not going forward and discussing how he takes care of his kids before the whole scenario went down. She's not going to say, you know, he wasn't that far back in child support. He was only three months behind. She's not going to use those contents because that she's there to become R. Kelly because she has the energy of the name, but no one's going to embrace her like they did R. Kelly. So she did it in vain, you know? Okay, let's listen. Eddie Murphy playing 99 different folks. Come on, the girl does it. How did that happen? Like, how did that that come about? Because you know what, I... Because she's married to R. Kelly and he is the superstar and he is the man behind everything that people take from him. So she definitely took energy. She took energy, his energy, and put him in a cell so that she could prevail. 
Oh, congratulations, Andrea Lee. The first thing I did, actually, my parents said you sit up and dance. So I've been a performer all of my life, and that's actually... Performing is what she does, just like she's doing right now, just like she did when she was in that position to get that place in R. Kelly's life. She was performing, reading the book, the special Bible, and the biggest demon on the whole tour bus. <laughs> you know, I'm not judging her. I'm just judging the character of the woman, the character of the woman, what she's put out for me to judge as far as the, in the, the, the content of the character, not the individual. I could care less about an Andrea Lee, an Andrea Lee Kelly, an Andrea Lee Penson Jones. I don't care who Andrea Lee is. I'm just looking at the content in which a person took a life of another individual to be somebody. And that's really sad. How me and my ex came together. People just think like, oh, where did she pop up from? The girl was born with the talent. So that's how the worlds even came together. So I've just been walking in my gift. If you remember, everybody around Robert Sylvester Kelly was hood rats. Everyone around him came and she tries to act like she came up from a, a royalty standpoint. It was born, she was born into it. So were you born into the cult? Were you born into the, the, um, the line of sinister satanic next meetings? Were you born into the ritual? Andrea Lee, because I have a question about that. You said you were born in it. So why did you need to marry R. Kelly in order to be where you are today? Because you weren't there when you met him. Because I didn't know you. But people kind of, they, they put that in the shadow because they want to talk about what they want to talk about. But it's something I've been doing all my life. Mm. So you've been, you were born a star. Born a star. LIDAR mapping 5,100 PA. Robo Rock S7. Honey, yes. yes. Born a star. Yes. And for a minute, you know, I let my light, it, it was dimmed for a little bit, but I found I'm back and she's doing it. So when you say your light was dimmed for a little bit, can you elaborate on that just a little bit more? Getting lost. Getting lost and not knowing how you got there. And I say that we're all trees, though we're Okay, so that's enough of that interview. Um, I just wanted to read some comments regarding it. Uh, three days ago, PM states, Drea is getting on my nerves. She's so cocky, but I do believe she's complicit in ways that I don't have enough space to list. Actually, she doesn't seem believable to me. Absolutely. Um, she's doing this to build her career. So because she was kind of washed up a little bit, she's getting older. So even in dance when, you know, and I, I'm not a dancer. So I give that to her as a professional. I mean, she has done her part with keeping her body up, with keeping her health up, I, I, I suppose. However, um, doing what she does, you know, is remarkable in her profession. She's a professional dancer. That's what she says she was born to do. So she should stick with that, not duplicate or carbon copy someone who she really may have had a jealousy against. And, you know, R. Kelly was someone to be, you know, idolized. And for her to sit back and act like she didn't think when she was making love to him, when she was listening to him go through his music, wow, I wish I was him. You know, that's the type of character that I get that Andrea was wishing way back then. Um, otherwise, she would not have definitely done what she did to him in order to bring him down and then do it with no remorse. And then now she's shining the bright light with his name. Um, and yes, I use his name because I don't know Andrea Lee. Um, so if she was really, really a critical superstar, she would have been able to run off of her own merit. Like he ran off of Kelly. Kelly was not a name that was a superstar name prior to R. Kelly becoming who he was. So that shows, of course, that she used 
um, leverage because of the name, um, the first generational name at that, you know, Joanne Kelly was a singer. Yes. God rest her, you know, God bless her, but she wasn't R. Kelly. Okay. Um, Georgia P says, T S I was not a fan of Drea, but after this interview, I'm loving her spirit and that black girl power. I'm a fan now. Once again, great interview. You're out here doing great things and is giving great and truthful interviews. Okay. So we got to give it to those who do like her. Um, okay. Um, this was a lovely interview. You just have a way to make people feel comfortable. So they're just more or less talking about the interview. They're not really talking about, um, they're, uh, they're talking about the interviewer. Um, and here's one. I love Drea and what she said. Don't worry about the last name. Worry about what she's doing with it. Well, that right there is a contradiction in and of itself because the last name you can now take and make go from Kelly to Lee because to me, it seems like when she sat in the back of that tour bus and she was plotting and planning her future as a domestic violence person back in the day, she dotted and crossed the T's and dotted the I's that, yeah, so he's, so he can be this person that's going to get me famous. She didn't know she was going to have to go through abuse or whatever she said she had to go through in her eyes to do it. But since she couldn't, she can't sing, she could only dance. So that keeps her voice quiet. So now she's going to say, okay, the abuse that came out because she didn't come out first. It wasn't her that came out first. And she did not come out first because of the sole purpose that she wasn't trying to go there until she saw the opportunity. And she jumped on the bandwagon and she said, now my voice can be heard because I was the ex-wife. Now I'm going to take the history of my grandfather, use it and manipulate the situation so that I in turn can be something bigger than just the dancer. Now I have the voice. Thank you, R. Kelly, for giving me the voice because I used your name to do it, is what she's telling us. Drea was given an Alana Van Zant tea here. I was here for it and her signature baby hairs. I don't know what that is. Work, Miss Drea. She ain't innocent as she thinks she is. She's full of bull crap, moon goddess. Kudos to you. You have proven that you are a true jack of all trades. No pun intended. You're very talented on all platforms and I applaud your strength, wit, intelligence, talent, heart, and what you have brought to so many difficult communities. I love this interview that you did with Miss Kelly. She's a strong, beautiful black woman. I wish her well on her future endeavors. Um, okay. Drea, I'm so happy for you and what you've come through. God bless, sister. She ain't got nothing else to talk about, but Robert Kelly, I'm sick of her. Lynette, me, M. Speak on it, Raz, B, and Drea. Best interviews, hands down. Zeus Network is utterly embarrassing. I don't know what that is. Um, I will go to Zeus Network and see what's going on. She went through some, but never called the police, but ran to lie time. She said, girl, bye. <laughs> this woman has been through hell and come out. She's so strong. You're so strong. Very good interview and good point she made about our representation in the media to the world. Come on, baby hairs. I, I don't understand what that is. You get no credit for being a voice for domestic violent vi violence victims unless you do something to help the survivors. And you, ma'am, only speaking out after this whole situation blew up. Goodbye. This is unintel this unintelligent woman. If you are a victim, you will have nothing to do with anything of his damn fool um, of his. Damn fools will believe you. Those who think at the surface level will believe you. Victims for profit. And I do believe that. 
So yes, what are your views? What are your views? I think this is something that I wanted to just share and put out there to just share with those who may run into this video about our, uh, about Andrea Kelly. I mean, Andrea Lee, <laughs> Andrea Lee. Um, and she's still right there in midstream trying to move forward right before the sentencing. She came out right now for a reason. So I thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing this podcast. And as always, let's keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.